Hi viewers, welcome back. We are starting a new series on aircraft maintenance engineering. In this lecture, we'll be discussing about module three on electrical fundamentals, sub module one on electron theory. We will be uploading videos on each and every topic in module three. So if you have not subscribed our channel, then please subscribe and also press the bell icon so that you never miss any video. Matter. Anything which occupies space and has mass is called matter. Examples, air, water, sugar, sand, oxygen. Matter may be classified in a number of ways. Classification of matter based on physical properties. There are three normal states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Solids have strong molecular force and a definite shape and size, solids can neither flow nor be compressed. Liquid have weak intermolecular force and large intermolecular spaces. Liquids do not have a definite shape but can flow. Gases have large intermolecular spaces, thus weak intermolecular force, high compressibility and no definite shape and volume. Classification of matter based on chemical composition. It's mixture, compounds, and elements. Elements. An element is a substance which cannot, by any known chemical process, be split into two or more chemically simpler substances. Examples are hydrogen, oxygen, copper, iron, carbon. Compound. It is a substance which contains two or more elements which are joined chemically together. Examples are like hydrogen and oxygen in water, sodium and chlorine in salt. Mixtures. A mixture consists of elements or compounds which are brought together by a physical process. Example, salt and sand, carbon and iron fillings. Materials may also be classified according to the particles it contains. This is the atomic view of matter. This view gives us a better understanding of electrical and electronic phenomena. Molecules. The molecules of an element or compound is the smallest particle of it which can normally exist. It consists of one or more atoms of the same or different types joined together. For example, if we take a drop of water and keep dividing it into smaller and smaller portions, then a point would eventually be reached where the particles of water are of such a size that further subdivision would split them into the hydrogen and oxygen of which they are composed. These last minute particles of water are known as molecules and these are the smallest particles of water which can exist alone and still behave chemically as water. Atoms. If a water molecule could be magnified sufficiently, it would be seen to consist of three smaller particles closely bound together. These three particles are atoms, two of hydrogen and one of oxygen. The water is a compound. The oxygen and hydrogen are elements. Every element has atom of its own type. An atom is the smallest indivisible particle of an element which can take part in any chemical change. Structure of an atom. Nucleus is the core or center of an atom. It contains two particles, protons and neutrons. The third particle called an electron, it travels outside nucleus in an elliptical orbit. Nuclear contains two particles, protons and neutrons. Protons are the particles inside the nucleus which are positively charged. 
in addition to the protons the nucleus usually contains electrically neutral particles called neutrons nucleus contains the total mass of an atom that is the mass of neutrons plus the mass of protons neutrons have the same mass as protons whereas electrons have negligible mass as compared to protons or neutrons atom as a whole is electrically neutral they are equal positive and negative charge in an atom positive charge on protons is equals to negative charge on electrons and the electrical attraction keeps the electron circling the nucleus ions a neutral atom contains an equal number of positive charges protons and negative charges electrons atoms however do not always exist in neutral form and it is possible for atoms to gain or lose electrons an atom which lose an electron has lost one of its negative charge and is therefore left with an excess of one positive charge called cation it is known as positive ion an atom that gains an electron has an excess of negative charge and is called negative ion or an ion electrical materials materials which allow an electric current to flow easily through them are known as conductors and those which prevent the flow of an appreciable current are known as insulators conductors and insulators are used in electric circuits to provide paths and to control flow of electric current practically all normal materials are either good conductors or good insulators however a few materials which falls between these two categories and these are called semiconductors the best electrical conductor is silver but for most purposes its high cost is prohibitive so copper is the standard conductor material aluminum is an alternative but it is not such a good conductor electron distribution an atom consists of electrons which are revolving around a nucleus electrons are small negatively charged particles that follow a circular path or orbit while moving around the nucleus they cannot move freely at any random position their revolution is restricted in particular orbits according to their energy levels energy levels are nothing but the fixed distances of electrons from the nucleus of an atom the energy levels are also called electron shells an electron can move in one energy level or to another energy level but it cannot stay in between two energy levels the figure shows the energy levels of an atom the first four energy levels are shown here the first energy level is also called level k the second level is called level l third energy level is m and so on the electrons from energy level k contains the least energy whereas the levels that are far from the nucleus contains more energy electrons in the outermost energy levels are also called valence electrons various properties of atoms are based on these valence electrons now we will discuss about the energy state the increase in energy takes place by a fixed amount if electrons absorbs this fixed energy it can jump from lower energy level to a high energy level so suppose if a electron is orbiting in a k level that is the first energy level that is also known as ground state so if it absorbs energy it will go to the higher energy level which are excited levels it can go to l m or n on the contrary when an electron jumps from a higher level to a lower level they 
emit energy this emission of energy is generally in the form of light when electrons transit from one energy level to another either emission or absorption of energy takes place the lower energy level is also called ground state whereas the higher energy levels are known as excited states the energy levels are measured in electron volt there is a forbidden energy gap between each energy levels electrons in energy levels either need to absorb or emit energy to overcome the forbidden gap and change the energy level and thus conduction of electricity takes place in an isolated atom electrons are present in energy levels but the molecules arrangements in solid liquids and gases are not the same in solids they are arranged closely so that the electrons within the molecule atom move into the neighboring atoms orbit in gases the molecules arrangement is not close whereas in liquids it is moderate therefore the electron orbit partly cover when the atoms approaches mutually because of the combining of atoms within solid as an alternative of single energy levels the levels of energy bands are formed the set of energy levels is packed closely which is known as energy band let us understand different types of energy band first is valence band valence electrons are those electrons that are present in the outermost shell of an atom they have different energy levels and form an energy band known as the valence band they occupy a maximum amount of energy conduction band as outermost electrons are not tightly held to the nucleus due to which sometimes outermost electrons will leave the outermost orbit at room temperature and become free electrons these free electrons tend to conduct current in conductors and this is the reason they are known as conduction electrons therefore the conduction band is that band that contains conduction electrons and has lowest occupied energy a wide band gaps tell us about different conditions required to energize valence electrons to conduction bands in the case of metals both valence band and conduction band overlap each other electrons can promptly bounce between these two groups which shows the material is profoundly conductive forbidden energy gap the gap present between the conduction band and valence band is known as forbidden energy gap if the forbidden energy gap is more then the valence band electrons are tightly bound or attached to the nucleus and we need higher outer energy to excite valence band electron to overcome the forbidden gap energy and to reach to the conduction band band theory we have understood that materials can be classified into conductors insulators and semiconductors we can make the study of their properties easier by plotting out their electron energies it has been observed that energy states in these materials lead to the formation of energy bands in insulators the electrons inside the valence bands are separated from the conduction band by the forbidden energy gap elements with 6 to 8 valence electrons cannot have electrons in the conduction bands because the forbidden gap is too large the energy band gap is of 5 electron volt or more sulfur and rubber elements are examples of insulators in contrast to this the valence band overlaps the conduction band in metals elements with one or two electrons in their outer orbits readily transfer them from atom to atom because there is an overlap between the valence and conduction bands and there is no band gap silver and copper are the elements which are good conductors in semiconductors this forbidden energy gap is so small of order of 1 electron volt 
that any turmoil or other excitation can bridge the gap. The elements like germanium and silicon have four electrons in their valence shell. In conductivity, they lie between the good conductors and good insulators. So they are known as semiconductors. If you have found the video interesting, then please like the video and share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe the channel. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.